cases in South Africa's economic hub are rising at a rate never seen before, as indicated by Gauteng Premier David Makura's advisory committee on the pandemic. So far, Ekuruleni, Johannesburg and Tswane are considered hotspots where a rapid uptick in cases driven by the new Omicron variant has been recovered or perhaps recorded. The good news is that hospital admissions are currently lower than at similar points during the third wave. Gauteng Director of Public Health, Dr. Adil Chikobu, joins me now to unpack some of these figures. Dr. Chikobu, very good morning to you. Thank you for your time. I mean, we woke up to some shocking numbers, really, a massive, massive rise in these cases around uh, 11,535 cases now in South Africa. I mean, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the contributing factors here. Good morning, Mpo, and uh, good morning to the viewers of Newsroom Africa. Um, you are quite correct. Those numbers are quite concerning, uh, but I also want to indicate up front, I'm not the director of public health. I'm actually the yeah. provincial vaccination coordinator. So we do have another uh, separate unit that would otherwise speak in greater detail as far as the uh, COVID uh, numbers are concerned. But of course, we do uh, work uh, alongside each other. And you are quite correct. We are very, very concerned about that trend. So far, we are seeing a, a very high increase as far as the trajectory of cases is concerned. It's um, what we call uh, the equivalent of an exponential growth that is taking off and it's currently mainly concentrated around our three metros, which is Johannesburg, Ekuruleni, and it's funny, as you have correctly indicated. The, most of the admissions, I mean, hospital admissions at least, are uh, mostly unvaccinated and younger people, and fears that the spread may now move to, to older people. What's your take? No, it's, it's, it's quite correct, and, and we are very concerned, and it's a trend that we are currently watching. Hence the call by the Premier to ensure that uh, uh, all people are vaccinated. Uh, if I'm to get into the statistics as far as it was presented yesterday, I think it's, it's almost 90 percent or slightly above 90 percent of those that are hospitalized uh, have not yet been vaccinated. But of course, the data itself is also being collected, so I must just indicate that. But this is based on what has been collected so far. Um, and so we really stand and reiterate the call for every single person to get vaccinated, uh, both old and young. And uh, as you have indicated, yes, once people um, say we are not vaccinated or we are the younger population, but remember there are elements around the family structure, community transmissions. They may not suffer in terms of severity, but then they pass it on to the older generation who will then in, in fact suffer as a result of this severity. So we stand by that call and want to encourage all the people to please get vaccinated as soon as possible. I also like the statement which was made yesterday to say, though officially we have not yet hit the fourth wave, but let's act as if we are already in the fourth wave. And then we ensure that all our non-pharmaceutical interventions, every single tool that we have, including vaccinations, all those are brought on board. There's also a lot of concern about the, the new variant and, of course, uh, as the vaccination drive is underway to encourage more and more people to get vaccinated, there, there are some uh, questions around the impact of the new variant on the current vaccination. What are some of the, the latest uh, information that's coming in in response to some of those questions? Bo, I'll be honest with you and say from where we are, of course, we, we are guided by evidence. Um, there have been quite a number of um, preliminary indications and research, but we are still waiting for more evidence as far as the efficacy of the current vaccines are concerned on the new variant. Uh, we clearly know that it, the chances are it may be highly transmissible from what we are reading and seeing. And also when you look at the exponential growth of cases, we did not see such a growth in the previous uh, waves. So the suggestion and the evidence does indeed show that uh, it's likely to be transmissible at a much faster rate than previous um, variants. But as far as severity is concerned, uh, we are still waiting for the data. Uh, the scientists are looking into this matter and they are working very hard. Uh, but again, you know, we, we, we still don't want people to wait for that. We would rather all of us take the appropriate and necessary measures to protect both ourselves as well as our communities and our loved ones. 
The conversation around mandatory vaccination policy is one that's coming up very strongly, uh, especially for most part of this week, as uh, we know that, um, you know, the health uh, MEC, uh, various health MECs, the Western Cape Health MEC has said that she supports uh, that policy to say that uh, colleges and universities should perhaps pursue it to ensure that uh, the academic year for 2022 is not, um, you know, delayed. And we're also seeing the Gauteng Education Department on a drive to ensure that those between the ages of 12 to 17 are also vaccinated. Let's talk a little bit about some of the, the benefits that will come with this push for, for academic year of 2022. Yeah. So um, a greater part of it is um, because we are in partnership, obviously, with the Department of Bas Basic Education, as you have just indicated. And one of the issues that we are now doing is to say, let's take the vaccine to the doorstep of communities providing access. So it's all a strategy that is aimed at enhancing access, access for the learners and the families and members of the community. And along that initiative, obviously, um, there's been a lot of talk about the consent, and we are encouraging families to discuss the benefits of vaccination and as far as the vaccination itself within a school environment is concerned, we took a position as the Gauteng Provincial Government that would want that to be guided by consent. So we are actually also encouraging uh, parents to give consent, but that applies to vaccination that is happening within the school premises so that the school authorities, the SGB, the principals are protected because they do have other legislations that govern operations within the school community. But where such um, consent has not been offered, then of course the pupils can actually go to a private or a public healthcare facility and still get vaccinated. So we think that if we are able to get to the 12 to 17 age cohort, and just to give you an indication, um, as of yesterday in Gauteng, we had done more than 100,000. Uh, but we know that uh, it's still a small fraction because we do have 1.2 million of them that fall within that age cohort. We'll be, to some extent, able to mitigate against the transmission. There is transmission in, happening in school communities, at families, uh, and, and, and you know the evidence does indicate that at times the school children actually take the, 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 the virus from the school to the families or vice versa from the family to the schools. So we'll be able to guard against that. Uh, not that it does prevent transmission itself, but we think that when the school children are actually vaccinated, their immunity levels are raised, then it does act as a big mitigation as far as the transmission itself is also concerned. What's the talk around um, research and access for children younger than 12 years around vaccination? Well, so as far as we are concerned, we are guided by policy, especially for us as a provincial department of health. Ours is to man operations and the policy side is the prerogative of the national department of health. But I do know, of course, when you look at other countries such as uh, the United States, they have actually opened it up to five years and above. Um, South Africa, we are guided by SAPRA. They then evaluate and look at all this evidence and then they inform us accordingly once a decision is made. So I know there are processes that are currently underway, but until SAPRA makes that pronouncement, uh, the current position is that we are only looking at 12 years and above. But clearly indications are sometime next year, there are likely to be pronouncements made as far as the, the remaining age categories are concerned. And um, before we let you go, let's talk about the J&J &J vaccine and perhaps the, the booster shots that uh, should come with it. Is there some sort of cause for concern for those who have been vaccinated with the J&J? &J? And um, what is the rollout of the booster shots looking like or the plan thereof to ensure that process? So um, speaking for how Teng, as of Wednesday the 1st, uh, you will recall that um, currently the booster is only available to those who took J&J &J and not Pfizer. So we are restricting ourselves to the healthcare workers who took J&J. Um, &J. The number is actually 46,549. In Gauteng, we have now taken the booster for J&J. &J. It's um, 
roughly 28.2% of the vaccines on, on, on booster that have been administered in the country. It's a good number, but we think if we then compare ourselves with the province like Western Cape, we are obviously doing lesser. They actually have more in terms of absolute numbers. Uh, Sisonke vaccines which have been administered yet, their workforce is uh, lower than ours as Gauteng. So the uptake is not at a level where we would have liked it to be. And um, we know very well that this will come to an end on the 17th of December. We expect everyone to have taken the booster. So it's a cause for concern. I have to indicate that at the pace at which it is happening. And there may be various in, uh, reasons why this is playing out, including misinformation, disinformation, etc. cetera. Um, of course, there were also reports uh, about um, side effects and we think SAPRA has been looking into that. It hasn't been a very big percentage, but unfortunately, uh, that gets coverage and prominence over everything else, no matter the small fraction. And I'm not necessarily saying it's not important because it's a small fraction. But we are just saying there have been a number of factors which we suspect have been influencing uh, the rather low uptake that we are seeing as far as the J&J &J booster is concerned. And I'm really speaking in particular for how tech. Very well. Thank you so much uh, for that update and your time, Dr. Adil Chukomvu. They're speaking uh, as a vaccination coordinator for, for Gauteng and uh, on the very latest when it comes to vaccines.